Right, one thing I thought would be interesting is, uh, because you were in these different teams, where some people, you know, played four or five years in one team, you got to play with a lot of the different in-game leaders in the Swedish scene, actually. So, one that I actually want to ask about, just because no one ever talks about this period, is you obviously played under threat way, way, way yeah. back when you oh. were both on the on the come-up, you know. And people now, obviously, especially in the modern day, will know threat and they'll know he's like, got a great mind for the game and you later was your coach. Right, when you played under him, like, what was threat like as an in-game leader? Because I know from talking to him, he also, I mean, he, I guess he has a connection to you in that sense like in the same way as a lot of the Swedish players like basically the way teams like Fnatic and Nip played in CSGO that was just the way all the Swedish teams play you play semi like you know it's a little bit loose you know you have you have a standard set of stuff you're going to do and the idea is then it's on the players it's up to the player to make the right decision to do the right thing you know whereas yeah. he wanted to be almost like I always joked with these he was like a secret Dane like he always he almost wanted to play like the Danish style of couch like where you have yeah. the set tactics and you hit this timing and this guy does this like what was it like to play under him <sighs> Of all in games leaders I played under, uh, Fret uh, was the one that teached me the most uh, because he was there in the beginning of my career and also uh, in in a way in the end of my career as well. Like sure. he teached me the most about the game and understanding and how it changes the meta and like how to be more aggressive, more passive, more laid back and all that kind of stuff. So he teached me the way of like understanding the game way better than anyone else did. You know, like. Maybe he didn't see it as that, but I, I see it as how he teached me, you know, like, because in the beginning, you know, we had, you know, lesser Danish style tactics in our earlier stage of career, but then he changed it up. We'd be more, you know, pack like heavily and more team play, more communication and like more thinking outside of the box thinking. And he, he did that and made me as a better player and a better teammate uh, through the years because how his mentality were of leading a team. Um, if I would describe him as a, like an in-game leader, a uh, very tactical one, someone that loves to do things outside of the box a lot. He comes up with things that doesn't make any sense in the first first time okay. we're seeing, because you're going to be like, why are we doing this? Or can you give me an explanation of why this is going to work or anything like that? And when you try it out, you're going to be in the beginning like, nah, it's not going to work. But then you try it a couple of more times. You're going to see the mindset and like how we went through it and like how we did it and understand it and like why it's going to work and all that kind of stuff. And it, it blows my mind every time when he did that. You know, like I, I remember fondly in 2016 when he became my coach the first time. Uh, I think it was the first time he did. I think yeah, it yeah. Was, yeah, it was two times. Yeah, because we took a break afterwards. Um, and he showed me of changing my role like completely and do a 180 and like use me in a way that's going to benefit the team more. It's going to hurt my stats and, you know, my yes. individual playing, but he, he told me to change it completely and, you know, explaining me like how my team is going to help me, but also give me the room to do whatever I want to. And before I had, you know, the space of doing whatever I wanted to, because he, he trusted me. And he knew no, I'm not going to do any stupid mistake. And if I did, I'm going to repay it the next round or two, two rounds later. You know, like I'm, I'm that kind of a player. Like I'm going to redeem myself more and more and help the team even more if that's necessary. Uh, but he, he, he taught me the way of being more aggressive and more, you know, understanding of the game. Like, why am I sacrificing myself to the teammates and understanding like how it works, like how the game is supposed to be played, you know, like, because at the end of the day, you're five people and you're going to work together as a group, not individuals. And you're just going to sure. be winning by that. Because that was seeing me in, in, my, in my way or how I think of it. That's how the Swedish is were about, you know, like yes. five people together, best player together, have a decent or a good in-game leader that has the voice that everyone listens to and yes. trusts the gut with it. Here was a guy showing off because he, he is not a vocal no, he's a pretty quiet guy. He's kind of like a chill guy if people don't know. He's not an authority yeah. figure like that. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, Fred is not a person. He will explain it to you. And if you don't explain, he's going to explain it again. He's going to be that person. But he's not going to get mad if you don't understand it or being like, like, give up too easily. He's going to be like giving you bre like breathing room to actually understand it, what he means with it, and show you proof of how it works. And he's also going to be like, you know, very laid back and say, it's okay, go forward instead of backward. Like, 
let's say uh, we lost uh, Antico, for example. A lot of coaches like Gimli would be mad because someone did something that would be more aggressive or hunting for eco kills or whatever it is, you know. Fred would be like, it's okay. Look forward instead, you know, like but he didn't say it in a in a way that's gonna be everyone listens to it to the to the bone. He's gonna say it like normally and it's gonna be very very laid back in that way. And I think that's a very good quality of his because you know in the end of the day, if he did a mistake you have to understand it, not him, because he's going to mention it once or twice, but it's not going to make you be like mad about it. He's just going to make you understand the issue that he did and go forward and let it, you know, disappear. That's, okay. that, that's how I look at him as an in-game leader, because some in-game leaders could be very pissed and be like, why did he do that? You know, like, uh, and then like have the angry tone and motivation to push yourself forward and do the correct way later on, or you do the same mistake again, but a little bit better. So you take two guys with you or one guy with you and then hope for the best. Basically he was, you know, like thinking it forward instead of being like, uh, there's no need to yell him out because he did this mistake. It's better to be like, make him understand it and see it from his own eyes to see, okay, you did this because you were way more aggressive and like way more laid back. That's, that's how I would describe him as a game leader. Or coach.